All right. Didn't write the title of this one, so I'll just do it on screen. How to Lectio Divina. Boom. So what we're talking about this video is exactly that. How to Lectio Divina. I just touched my face. That's bad for the coronavirus. You shouldn't do that. So how to Lectio Divina. What we're going to do is walk you through each of the steps, tell you how to do it so that when we share these on Mondays, you know exactly how to go about it. And so on Mondays, what we're going to do, the reflection is going to kind of get these two steps done for you. You don't really have to do it yourself if you don't want to. But if you want to, it's a good idea because we're going to read it one time there and you can read it with us on your own Bible. But then if you want to start going into these steps as the week goes on, come back and visit it. Maybe you do it first thing in the morning. Maybe you set a certain time of day where you read it, read it again. The idea is that you can walk with it, soak in that scripture, the different parts of it, and kind of get something different from it each time, so you can go a little bit deeper. But here's how those steps work. First, we have the first step, lectio, which translates to read, if you don't know all these words are Latin. And so the first time you read it, and you're doing the lectio portion, what you're going to want to do is try and get that surface level stuff. So that's just kind of, you read it, you see what jumps out at you, you're like, oh, I found that, that Jesus said that, pretty interesting. Or... Uh, if it's in the Old Testament, oh, when Moses said so-and-so, then that's, that's something that I thought was like, why did he say that? Um, or whatever the basics are to you. You want to look for content and narrative. Things that are more on the surface level that are going to just be, I read it, I understand it, I know what's going on, and this is kind of just what I found interesting. You don't have to go super, super deep into it. You don't have to think about it too long. It's more just to say, okay, this is what the story is about, and I got, I got it, and I understand it, and now I can move forward. Step number two, what we're going to do is called the meditatio, which translates to reflect or like meditation. So with that one, you want to sit with it a little bit and not just say, okay, what, are the, what is the content, the narrative, not just what happened, but what am I supposed to take from this? So if we're reading like a psalm, and the psalm is about praising God, and it kind of shows you how to praise God, or maybe like what the ways that they're choosing to praise God, or if you're reading a story about someone uh, from the Israelites, or if you're reading about Jesus, and you know Jesus is teaching something, whatever the message is that you can take, right? So if you're reading the Beatitudes, which is your confirmation uh, gospel, or for the Mass, is the Beatitudes are going to tell you what is the kingdom of God like, how do you live your life, how does God see the poor, that kind of thing. So with this one, you're going to do what is the message. And the kind of, what is God saying to you, right? We say this is God's word, and so what is God speaking to us? And so the things that you're going to ask are that, what is God saying, and also this scripture shows me dot, 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 right? And so that's the second step. So those are going to be the first two that we're going to kind of cover in our um, reflections that we share on Mondays, but that, uh, you know, you can go back and read it as many times as you want, the more the better, because each time you're going to probably find something a little bit each time that's going to go deeper and a little bit more. Then third, we have uh, what's called the oratio, which is to respond. Uh, or oratio is a similar word to prayer. Um, like in Spanish, we say oracion, which is, which is to pray, uh, or a prayer in Spanish. And so oratio is how we respond to what we're hearing. So when we read it, what's our personal meaning, right? That's kind of different from the message. The message is what is the words telling us based on what happened in that story. But the personal meaning of the, the response is we read it, and then how do, how do we call, feel called to respond? So do we feel called to pray about a certain thing? Like if we're reading about gratitude, do we feel called to pray about gratitude? If we're reading something that is more like needing God, do we, do we need God right now ourselves? And being called to action as well. So this is the time where you're going to want to do something like journaling, art reflections. Like if you're more of an artist and you want to draw something out, maybe draw what the picture is of the story or something along those lines. And that's going to be important there. So oratio is going to be more about prayer and action. So here we read it, we think about it, we let it sit, and then we take that next step of, so I was here, but now it's moving me in this direction. And then last but not least, for the fourth portion, what is called the contemplatio, or rest. So this is uh, it's the similar word to contemplation, right? When we contemplate something, we're not really trying to figure something out. We're not trying to pull a bunch of stuff out of it. We're kind of just trying to sit with it. Like if someone says something really profound to us, we go, hmm, I need to think about that, right? And so that's kind of what this step is about. 
from these first three steps, maybe you pulled a little bit of something or maybe something even more is coming out every single time. And you start to see a trend or a theme or a motif or whatever it is that's repetitive. So what is that significant part that keeps jumping out at you and then it kind of calls you to stillness, that, that, oh, I need to think about that kind of feeling. And then it's going to stick with you ideally so that not only do you take some time, but you read it that last time and you kind of just sit with it and just, hmm, what does this mean? Why is this the thing that's coming to me? What do I need to get from it? Where is this taking me? All those kinds of questions. You want to kind of try and settle those a little bit, let things kind of drop, because if we're throwing and juggling too many ideas all at once, it's hard to pull something out. But if you take that time to really take maybe some five to ten minutes of quiet and just let yourself rest with it and say, hmm, what is that? What is God saying here? Where is the Holy Spirit pulling me? And all of that kind of works together and mixes up, and then you've done Electio Divina. And so, like I said, we'll share these two portions will be kind of what, what's done on Monday, and then you'll be invited at the end to go into these next two steps and read it as many times as you want to. Even if we read it first time and you want to go into three, four, five, six times of reading it, you read it every day of the week until we give you a new one, that's cool too. Whatever you feel called to, it's just an invitation and that's what we want to share with you, and we're looking forward to doing it. See you then. Thank you.